Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Clinical Associate Career Information Webinar. My name is Danal Netman, and I will be your host for this evening. So a warm welcome to our students um, and, and our guests. We have clinical associates that are from Wits University, University of Pretoria, as well as Walter, Walter Sisulu University. Um, so today will be our fourth webinar of the monthly series. These are usually online sessions that are held monthly, um, and it's usually the first Monday of every month. So the reason we have these webinars is to expose our students to qualified clinical associates who will come in and share their journey as they navigate through the different workspaces. Um, as a result, our students will then gain some insight on postgraduate opportunities, um, what is actually out there in the world, um, where clinical associates can be placed, and some activities as well as challenges that um, they may be experiencing. These type of things may actually help us um, as students um, in deciding on which career path we actually want to choose. So as I mentioned, I will be the host for today's session. I am a clinical associate and an educator at uh, the WITS Clinical Associate Program. So just to share a little about who I am, uh, I graduated in 2015 BCMP uh, program at WITS University, and I started working as a clinical associate um, in 2016 um, and was a manager at this clinic. So I was the clinical associate um, as well as manager of a clinic in 2016. And thereafter, I moved into the corporate space where I spent half of my time as a key accounts manager and the other half in uh, a cardiology practice. So in 2018, I went into private practice in emergency medicine, where I worked as a principal clinical manager and a clinical associate within the emer emergency departments um, nationally. So now I actually find myself in the field of academics at WITS, um, and I am starting towards my master's in emergency medicine at UCT. So this is a first, I am the first clinical associate to be at UCT, and I hope that, uh, sorry, well, doing masters, and I hope that many of you are going to follow very soon. So that was actually me, and without further ado, let's get going. Okay, so we have three speakers today. Um, and our first speaker is Lunga. So Lunga is a uh, sorry, a Walter Sisulu graduate. He graduated in 2011. He has completed short courses in advanced clinical care, adult primary care, basic HIV courses uh, for healthcare professionals, and he is involved in voluntary medical male circumcision. So Lunga currently works for the Department of Health for the past 11 years. So I'd like to please hand over the stage to Lunga to address you guys and to explain further on his uh, career path. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for inviting me to this uh, webinar to speak about my work journey. Um, I am Lunga Kata. Um, I come from a small town in Biz called Bizana in the Eastern Cape, and I graduated from Walter Sisulu University um, in 2011 and started working for the Department of Health in 2012 at Settlers Hospital in Gramstown. Um, I've had the pleasure to rotate in different departments uh, of the district hospital, eventually settled in the outpatient department, assisting with general cases initially, but seeing a need to assist the team and the community, I started an orthopedic clinic. Um, I also had an opportunity to complete HIV and TB courses, adult primary care, advanced clinical care, and many more which contrib contributed to my skill set. Um, this, I felt, was a need to improve the quality of care that I was giving to the patients in my setting uh, at a primary hospital um, in the district. Doing these courses um, wasn't too challenging. Um, it was just a refresher of things that we had learned um, as students uh, at Walter Sulu following the program. Um, so it was quite uh, refreshing to get an updated um, information um, so that my skills would be up to date. Since I've been practicing for such a long time, it is really important to keep uh, up to date with the latest uh, medications and uh, and, stand and standard operating protocols. Um, one of the places in which I found passion 
was um, in surgical skills. Um, I had an opportunity to work with surgeons um, because in the hospital that I worked in, we had um, a private public partnership. So surgeons um, would be able to then call upon my assistance. Um, we did uh, very uh, vast uh, minor and major surgeries. Um, laparoscopic surgeries, which I assisted in, uh, gallstones, appendix, and so forth. Also, um, with the passion of surgery, um, I ventured off into a voluntary male medical circumcision, where I went for a training, and after the training and doing my uh, certification, I was then uh, able to start a circumcision clinic um, at my hospital, and working alongside um, NGOs, which were hired by the Department of Health, um, we've been able to provide um, the surgical skill um, to a lot of patients in my district, which is Sarah Apartment District in the Eastern Cape. Um, I found a very, um, I, I found myself falling in love with um, male circumcision, um, thinking about the benefits that clients who have access to such um, would gain. Um, and I'm the one, I'm the only one currently who is performing the circumcision in my hospital. Um, seeing my work, the Department of Health also then uh, took me for training to become a mentor. And I've been training uh, nurses, doctors and other clinical associates um, in the surgical skills and circumcision and sharing the knowledge and skill. Um, working with, um, with the NGO Right to Care, I was able to also um, get a view of what it's like to work in the private sector. Um, so um, I just wanted to let you know that there are other opportunities besides working in the public sector for the Department of Health that uh, other NGOs out there are also looking for uh, skilled clinical associates um, willing to work and working alongside Right to Care, I was um, given an opportunity to enhance my skills um, and also be able to share it with other clinicians um, to, 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 to provide better quality health care um, to, the, to the patients in the district. Um, challenges experienced. Okay. Um, wanted to prove myself with my skill set. I earned the trust uh, of the clinic, clinical team, which in return allowed me to work without uh, constant supervision. This was awesome. Um, Constantly being supervised and countersigned um, would delay the patient waiting time. So being able to then uh, work past that, uh, getting the trust of the pharmacy, the pharmacy, getting trust of the medical officer and supervisor. Um, after a few years, um, three to five years, I was able then uh, to work autonomously um, unless I had uh, high high scheduled drugs such as your tripoline or your tramadols, which is schedule four and five where I would need a countersign. But uh, yes, that was the only scripts that would need a countersign. Otherwise, everything else on the EDL, I was able to prescribe without a countersign. Um, this was a great achievement, but then work, uh, the workload increased and eventually I noticed myself being burnt out and started to be stressed uh, by the demand of my time. So I found that because of the shortage of staff, and me being trusted by the clinical team, a lot of the work which was supposed to be shared it kept on drifting towards me. Uh, the nurses felt more comfortable to, to pass the patients to me and I started making emergency decisions which put a lot of pressure. So I did not enjoy that experience while I was trying to prove myself. So what I learned from that experience is that I needed to communicate with the team who understood the pressures uh, of the working environment. And eventually we found a better way for me to assist the team by not exploiting, uh, trying to perform at the level of doctors around me. So we <clears throat> made it clear who was my supervisor, who was my medical officer, and the roles those people played, because sometimes um, there were challenges with doctors thinking that they were my supervisors, trying to give me instructions. Uh, so once we had clarified uh, who was the supervisor and who was a senior medical officer to discuss clients and, and manage accordingly. It was a much easier thing for me to cope with and um, and make efficient decisions uh, moving forward. Um, I would like to say 
that the last 11 years of service have been amazing working at Settlers Hospital for the Department of Health. I've learned and seen that there are opportunities for growth in our program. We just have to be champions of our own future. You have to equip yourself with knowledge and skills to find your place in a highly competitive field. Um, don't be afraid to be innovative and take chances following your heart and passion. There are many opportunities for us to find ourselves and excel in. Um, I feel like once you, you equip yourself with the skills, you are able then to market yourself in, in, in different places. You're not, you're not restricted in a district hospital or in the public sector. You are able then to venture off into the private. You're, I've seen a lot of colleagues of mine um, being in the private sector and succeeding and doing very well for themselves. So I'm wish, I would like to wish you all the best in the journey ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Lunga. That was actually very, very inspiring. Um, it is quite nice to to see the different aspects or areas of medicine that we can fit ourselves in. Um, and this clearly shows that there is a large amount of opportunities available to our future clinical associates, provided you put effort and you go out there and you get skilled or you um, try and tackle a space that is brand new. I think it's so inspiring to see that and I hope many of you are already feeling inspired. Um, so our next speaker is, her name is Masheko. She graduated from the University of Wittes, uh, Valtistrani in 2015, and she's currently studying towards her master's in public health. She works in research um, at Wits, at an institution called Wits Vida. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Machiro Nkwana. I'm a clinical associate by profession. Um, I was in the same class as Danelle. So we know we know each other quite well. Um, before I enrolled as a student uh, for PCMP, I actually graduated uh, from Bert University in 2011 for a BSc degree uh, in anatomy and physiology. And then I took a gap year and the gap year was not intentional. Uh, it was simply because I could not find a job. And then I was introduced to uh, BCMP by uh, one of my friends, Emmanuel. And then after completing my B BCMP, um, I then started uh, working as a clinical associate uh, in a public, uh, in a private facility. However, I then left the private facility. It was called Quali Health um, in Deep Sluot. And then from Deep Slot, before I even went to, 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 to work, before I even worked in Deep Slot, I planned to work in Limpopo because I am from Limpopo and I know there's a shortage of doctors in Limpopo. However, I could not get uh, a job in Limpopo. They told me that uh, my, my vacancy has expired. They freezed, my, my funds were frozen. So I had to come back to Johannesburg and then I worked for Party Health. After working for Party Health, I then worked for the uh, university uh, as an associate lecturer, but I did what I was doing. I was tutoring. And then I decided to move back into uh, clinical practice just so that I can get adequate um, clinical experience. Um, and then in while I was in the process of moving back to uh, clinical practice, I then gained, I, I had a, a passion for for research, uh, then I applied for a master's in public health, and now I'm still continuing with my uh, my master's. I worked in uh, a medical center called Quad Care. It was initially called UK Medical Center, but now it's called Quad Care Medical Center. That's where I gained a lot of clinical experience. We did uh, circumcisions, we did the works. Every everything that you think that a clinical a clinical associate will do in a in a primary healthcare center, in that primary health center we also had students that came in just to gain experience, and some of them are employed uh, are still employed with with Quality Health, from from with Quad Care from Quad Care. That's when I then moved into research because I felt like gaining studying towards a master's degree 
and then gaining experience in research works hand in glove. So that's why then I opted to go into, into research and worked at um, Vetsvida. Vetsvida was uh, initially called RMPRU. Um, it is a research unit that is based in Baraguana Hospital. It's owned by Professor uh, Shabir Mahdi. Um, when I started working there, I worked as a clinical associate, not as a study coordinator, but as a clinical associate. I worked um, in I worked in surveillance studies. So what you ideally do, you collect specimen, you collect spe specimens from participants. We don't call them patients in research. We call them participants. Um, and then you do data abstraction. You do data uh, cleaning. You prepare uh, stats, and then you prepare you 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 also present the stats. So from then, after a couple of years, then I moved into clinical trials. Transitioning from surveillance studies into clinical trials, because it's in the same company, it was not really a challenge. Uh, it was just uh, just a promotion. You move from surveillance, you go to clinical clinical trials, where it is much more um, it's it's much more intense as compared to to surveillance studies. Um, in clinical trials, you you are involved with each and every sector of whatsoever study that you are given. So for example, when a study, when a study starts, there's something called uh, a protocol. You will have to understand the protocol. You will have to work with uh, stakeholders that will come and present the protocol, how the study should be run as well. And then afterwards you have to implement the study. For you to Im implement the study, it's also a process. You have to be given a go ahead. You have to delegate. You have to delegate um, the staff members that are to work on the study. Because if you're not delegated on that study, you are not supposed to work on that study. We call it a protocol deviation. You do not work on that study. So you coordinate the study from beginning to end, meaning even getting the participants. So, for example. Uh, for recruit, recruitment of participants, we have a database where we can recruit participants. Um, after recruiting participants, then we can we 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 we, we have um, a, a way of actually surfing them out and saying, okay, these ones they are appropriate for this study, and these ones are not appropriate for this study. However, you'll find that you have a lot of participants on your database, but they are not a match for that particular study that you're working for. So there's a pre-screening team. So we have a, a, a team that goes into the community to go and, uh, and and source out participants so that they can come and and join uh, and join the study so if they are a match for that study then we enroll the participants after enrolling the participants then they will have they, they will have um uh, visits that come into, they'll have visits like going to your OPD for your normal chronics. It's, it's something like that. You come in, participants will come in at the clinic and then have to be checked. They have to, be, there's vitals that you, that you check, you draw their bloods, but everything that you do, it's study specific. So you cannot uh, just draw any bloods. You have to be drawing bloods based on what the study needs at that visit. And then from there, you also uh, have stakeholder, you have to have stakeholder relationships because there's monitors that come in from the sponsors that come in and they check on a regular basis whether you're conducting the study according to the protocol that you were handed. Um, and also there is also preparation for uh, statistics. You present those um, statistics to Professor Shabir Mahdi which is really tough, but uh, he is uh, a person that will really motivate you and direct you in the right path. And then another thing is you'll have to work with, with a lot of staff. Like I was saying that when participants come in, they come in for their scheduled visits. Before, when they come in, they will, they will first go to uh, what we call research assistants. Research assistants will, will, will check whether that participant is their participant or even, even so, they will schedule the visit, they will call the participant to come in. So when they come in, they know this is our participant. From there, then they go to the nurses. After the nurses, the, the nurses will take vitals. From vitals, they'll go to the doctors. From the doctors, 
they are they go to the pharmacy and also they get they go to uh where we do reimbursements so in research we do not pay participants but we reimburse them for 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 transport then the participant can go home and wait to be called for the next um uh a visit so as a clinical associate in this in in this in this tech sector okay as a, as a study coordinator you're not necessarily hands on with participants you're not hands on with participants but what you're doing you're making sure that your study is running smoothly as per protocol being in research working in in research like i had said initially that i was working in a surveillance study it initially it was really it was really challenging because i'm i'm from a clinical background and then i went into um into research without even understanding the terminology there. I could not understand, I did not understand what a protocol was. I The only thing that I think uh, uh, enabled me to actually get the job was my passion for research and my clinical background. So my clinical background was not a waste. It it is not a waste at all. So when I got there, did not have any, 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 any uh, research experience, but I was assisted by um, my research assistant. Um, she showed me the ropes, but the challenge with this, uh, one of the challenges with this, with, with, with my first, my first study was that it's a, it was a big study. And at that time, I still could not really understand or, uh, or grasp what exactly it is that it was needed from me. But with time, I got to understand, and as they hired more staff, it became a little bit better. Then transitioning to um, trans transitioning to uh, being a, a study coordinator for clinical trials, the the the, the only challenge really for me uh, is, is is study specific. It's normal day to day things that are not running well. Um, normal day-to-day -day things that are not running well that can be resolved with your monitors. That can be resolved with with SAPRA and uh, what whichever stakeholder that needs to be um to be involved to to resolve that that uh that specific challenge and um another thing is at this unit uh we we, we have uh, a, a couple a, a, not a couple but a number of clinical associates and most of them are in in surveillance and we have group we have uh peer-to-peer -peer presentations every every week where we discuss with uh, other other professors or other people that, uh, or where we get presentations from people that have worked in that company, people that are in research uh, that have worked in that company so that they can direct us on which path to take. However, the one of the challenges that we always uh, bring forth is that there is no, that they, they have not really created um, a growth in the company itself. Though there is a lot of um, there is a lot of opportunities that are not within the that are not within the company, it would be really great for us to be able to grow in the company. For example, I was in surveillance. I was a clinical associate in surveillance, and then now I'm, I've moved to um, study coordinating. After study coordinating, what you can do is you can be a monitor. After monitoring, you can do auditing. But then another another thing that you can do is actually practice as a clinical associate and be what we call a sub investigator. So what a sub investigator does is they they see participants the, the same way that we are we are seeing patients. But whatever that they are searching for, it has to be based on the protocol. For example, we are testing vaccines. We are testing a COVID vaccine. So the reason that the participants have to come in for visits on a day, on a on a on a schedule, they have to come for scheduled visit is so that we can see whether the vaccine is is affecting them badly. Are they okay? Are still are they still healthy? If there's any anomaly, we send we have to report it and send it to Safra so we can actually see the participant. We can, as clinical associates, we can see the participants and everything else that we can, we we unable to manage. Then we can be uh, supervised by doctors in that regard. And this has actually happened in a company called w, WRHI, um, which is at Hillbro, where one of our colleagues, Emmanuel, uh, has worked as a sub investigator. However, for him to be able to work as a sub 
uh, a sub investigator, there had to be a lot of motivation to Sapra for him to be uh, given that post as a, a post as a sub investigator, sub investigator, because it's usually given to uh, medical officers. The last thing that I want to say to you, clinical associate students, is that we are the change that we need. If you want to push, if you want something, you have to be able to push to get that thing that, that you want. Like now, we have to push to be, uh, clinical associates that are in, in, in research have to push to be given uh, a chance to be monitors in ph pharmaceutical companies. Uh, we have to push to be sub investigators. And this, it's, it's not that it is not recognized, but if we do not bring forth uh, that need, if we do not present that need to the people that can actually make it happen for us, then nobody else will help us. And another thing is you have to be intentional about the direction that you're taking pertaining your career. Um, I don't uh, I don't want to uh, say people job hop, uh, but I find that some people, they job hop. But if you stay and gain sufficient experience wherever you are, well, while you are looking for something else, or while you are looking, while, while you are uh, applying for something else, the knowledge that you gain where you are is never a waste. And then the last thing is that clinical associates, we need to trust ourselves. We need to trust ourselves because I believe we are good enough. Thank you so much. Wow, that was really, really amazing. That was so lovely to hear. I mean, I, I, I definitely remember Masheko. We were classmates and she was very hardworking. I think my class was really hardworking. Um, and so was her. So it's so nice to see where she is at the moment. Um, and I think that we can all agree that um, this was very informative. I mean, there were aspects of this type of job um, that involves clinical associates that I didn't I didn't even know about. So this is so amazing. I mean, research is a very new field uh, when it comes to clinical associates. And it's nice to see that this path is actually being taken up by fellow colleagues. So we all need to take a lot more space and solidify our profession within this field. So I actually, I really urge every one of you to dip your feet in research and um, try it out. I mean, it's quite exciting. It's very interesting. Clinical trials are quite, um, it does, you know, it's it's not for everybody, but it can um, really spark some interest. So you should really consider it. So thank you so much for that. That was really wonderful. Um, okay, so our last speaker is Nomsa. Um, so Nomsa graduated from the University of Pretoria in 2015. She has a postgraduate diploma in HIV management with Stellenbosch University in 2018. And she recently graduated uh, with an MPhil in HIV management at Stellenbosch University this year. Congratulations. Um, that is actually wonderful, especially from Stellenbosch University. Um, she is a clinical associate working in research as well at Bitsvida. So I'm going to hand you over to Nomsa. Um, thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nom Sanda, but as said, um, and I'm a clinical associate. Um, I graduated from the University of Pretoria in 2015, and then I went on to do um, my postgrad diploma in um, Stellenbosch University. And right now, uh, oh yeah, and I recently graduated for my master's in um, HIV management also from um, Stellenbosch University. So um, I am so grateful for this opportunity to come and share with um, clinical associate students on my journey as a um, clinical associate and um, my past work experiences as well. Um, OK, so as mentioned, I'm a 28 year old. I'm coming from a small town um, in Bethel. It's in Mbumalanga, um, middle child of three, um, first one in the family to get a degree. Um, so shout out to every other student who's here and is the first one in their family to get a degree. Um, actually, I think for me, studying BCMP um, has been quite a roller coaster ride um, in the fact that I did not really want to do anything in health or be or do anything in medicine. So um, for me, this was just um, a new 
um, quite a new journey altogether from my matric. But when I started, I remember that um, there were a lot of things that were appealing to me um, that I heard from my lecturers and my um, um, facilitators and things like, you know, there's so much that you can do with your BCMP degree. I remember I went to Malawi when I was in my third year. That for me was um, really just an eye opener to say that I am not necessarily in a wrong field um, because there is um, so much um, that I could do with a BCMP degree. So today that's just uh, your process to say that there's so much you can do with the BCMP degree. Um, so I started working in 2016 at Evenda District Hospital. Um, it's a hospital in Bumalanga, which had a very large um, catchment area. Um, I was working in the outpatient department, and um, they we okay as 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 the only district hospital in the um, in that place. There was just a lot of um, cases and um, skills that I got to um, acquire, and um, there was a lot of. Um, different um, conditions that I got to manage um, as a clinical associate that was just starting to work. So I'm grateful for that opportunity because um, it um, grew my confidence also um, in managing um, patients. And then I moved in 2019 and um, I went to the Northern Cape. I was working for Innovo Mobile Healthcare. Um, it was a mobile clinic um, in the rural area in Guruman. And I think there was, um, or it was actually quite a fulfilling job for me because um, I got to experience people that really need health care and cannot necessarily get it all the time because they are far um, in, 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 the, in the rural areas where there is no um, hospital around. Um, clinics are quite far and the clinics are overloaded. So it was quite um, an experience for us as the mobile clinic to be moving around in um, the different areas and getting to help people and, you know, actually seeing how people appreciate the health care that we give them um, was actually quite very fulfilling for me. And then in 2021, I then moved to a private practice. Um, that was solely because I just needed to move back closer to home. Um, the Northern Cape is quite far from Mpumalanga, so I just needed to be um, back close um, to home. And that's where I joined a private practice and I was working for a GP, which was also quite a very busy practice. Um, and you know, the busier the place is where you're working, I think it's the more experience you gain as a clinical associate and the more confidence you also gain um, in yourself. And um, in 2022, I then moved um, to Vida, where I am working currently. Um, and it was also, um, I could say quite an experience of, you know, coming back from clinical um, background and now having to move into research. Um, I previously did not know that clinical associates could also be in research. So um, I was quite happy to join um, Vitsvida. And um, at Vitsvida, I am working since February last year. And as Mashiko has said, that um, there's different roles that clinical associates um, do in the company. And I think it's one of the companies where I've seen how clinical associates are actually quite utilized. There's a lot of clinical associates here, and um, some are study coordinators, some are team leaders. And um, I think it's really just um, a different kind of um, space altogether, moving from a hospital setting or a clinic setting into research. And um, what I do, um, I do participant um, consenting and enrolling in the study. I am working in a surveillance study as well. Um, we take samples. Um, some clinical associates also do minimally invasive tissue sampling. That's a part of a different study. Um, we do statistics. Um, we help with writing SOPs, um, we do data cleaning. Um, so that's basically what I do on a day to day, um, which is very different. But I am at a place where I am really learning a lot. And um, with um, the new qualifications that I have, um, I see that it, it has actually opened up for me. Um, I'm quite um, you know, I'm um, anticipating being a study coordinator as well. So I guess um, all the education that I have isn't going to waste. Um, I think challenges as a clinical associate, 
um, working in the different sectors because I've worked in a hospital, a clinic and in private. I think one of my greatest challenges was being recognized as a clinical associate and not as a doctor. You know, patients come in and they already are saying, um, you're a doctor. And I remember when I was working in the hospital, I tried as much, you know, to get the message across that, but I am not a doctor, I'm a clinical associate because we want clinical associates to be known as well. Um, but it is quite a challenge. Patients don't understand it. Some of the staff don't understand it. So you just end up being called a doctor, although you are a clinical associate. Um, my other challenge was, you know, being exploited sometimes um, by colleagues, by hospital management. You get to run around the whole hospital and you get to do whatever way you need it. And I think, um, you know, a way of overcoming that is just, you know, working um, with your scope of practice and, you know, just knowing that this is what I am supposed to do and this is what I am not supposed to do. In as much as, yes, you want to learn and especially as um, when you're straight from school and you going into the work environment, you really want to learn. But even there, just be sure that you do not get exploited and you do not get to do things that are out of your scope of practice. Um, the other challenge is having to work under supervision. As we all know, um, our, our, our course is um, a supervised one and you know in district hospitals sometimes there isn't anyone you know there's a shortage of doctors there isn't anyone to supervise you um so i think how i overcame the challenge was really just being um in contact with my clinical manager at all times to say that um in as much as they know that i need to be supervised but if there were things that they were comfortable that i could do then um can i then be allowed to do that um, I think the other thing is just negativity about the profession from other professionals. I've heard this a lot of, why don't you do medicine? Why don't you go and do this? Why don't you go and do that? But I think um, I do not regret, um, you know, studying um, to be a clinical associate. And as I've said that, there are so many other things that you can do with the um, BCMP degree. So um, we just shouldn't listen to negativity from other people. And sometimes you just need to, you are just alone because there's no other clinical associates you're working alone in the hospital. So that um, brings a challenge. But also, um, I think it's, it's, it's really just an opportunity for you to showcase yourself what you can do as a clinical associate and just make sure that it is known that a clinical associate was doing this. Um, and then, you know, they don't switch your profession around. Sometimes you get called a nurse sometimes you get caught but just um just sticking to what you know that you are i'm a clinical associate and this is what i do um and i think um on my last notes what i want to say to students is that um you know you're not lost um, you made, you did uh, make a good career choice um, with this, and it's going to open many doors for you. Mashiro um, has said on um, all the other places or in research, how many other doors are open for us in research as well. Um, we know that as clinical associates, we are no longer now just working in district hospitals, but in tertiary hospitals as well. Um, so I just want to say, don't quit on yourself. You know, everyone is different. Um, what is easy for other people may be hard for you but you know do not give up um if you know your end goal um just work hard at achieving um that goal and i think um do not despise yourself or look down on yourself because you're a clinical associate i've had a lot of negativity around um, my career but it's only now that you know you get to study and um you further your studies and people are like oh wow so there's um other things that you can do so you can be a lecturer as a clinical associate so i'm saying that um in as much as you do not look down on yourself then you are teaching other people also to not do that and um your circumstances your background does not define you you are great and you will make it as a clinical associates thank you thank you so much that was wonderful um i really appreciated that especially that last slide with all of your wise words it was beautiful and again congratulations on your recent graduation uh you are making us all very very proud um i find lots of clinical associates now completing masters and phds and it is so inspiring and so amazing to see. um so all of these challenges that our speakers have um that i have mentioned are actually very valid and have been experienced by many and our predecessors have worked very hard to make it easier for us and face 
lots of challenges. So I think it is our responsibility to continue to drive our profession and, in, and fit in every gap you may find. OK, so we can now move on to our questions. Um, and I have a, a question that is directed to Lunga. So um, Lunga, you are one of the longest standing clinical associates, having worked for about 11 years now. What motivates you to continue serving as a clinical associate, especially in our government sector? Um, thank you for that question. Um, there are multiple reasons why I continue to practice as a clinical associate and, and I enjoy it. Firstly is seeing the impact that I have I have had on the community. Um, the community has identified me as one of the best clinicians for them um, with the services that I've provided for them in multiple fields. So that has really been a motivational uh, or an inspirational thing for me. Secondly is that when we started the program, um, there were a lot of anxieties and a lot of people who were going to be using it as a bridge to go to MPCHB. And I was one of the first uh, cohorts which went overseas to see the original um, physician assistants, which the program is uh, replicated from. And they had given me stories and shared their stories of the challenges, which are similar to what we're facing now and how they went past them to be uh, affirmed and, 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 and really be recognized um, as clinicians. So taking that, I felt that I should be one of those clinicians or clinical associates who remain in a program to motivate those that come behind me um, so that they can have someone to look up to who can set an example that you can make a living, you can survive of being a clinical associate, you can set your own pace and tone um, and have a normal life. I have a family, I have a wife and child, I have a house, um, and I'm quite content with the life that I've achieved as a clinical associate. So um, this is one of the reasons why I continue to practice as a clinical associate and not be intimidated by the progress of my other peers who went on to, to further uh, equip themselves with education and, 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 and diverse themselves. Um, but to continue as a clinical associate. Thank you. Thank you so much. That, um, that is quite inspiring. I mean, I think I hope that um, many of you are finding um, a career path that you can choose. I mean, happiness and contentment in the profession is really, really important. And I think once you find your field of medicine that you love, I think it never really becomes work. So I think that's quite important. Um, I have a question for Nomsa and uh, Masheko. In terms of research, would you or what courses would you recommend our new graduates um, to obtain? Uh, would it, in terms of getting a better opportunity um, within the field of research, and do you think it is possible um, to actually have them do electives in a research facility? I know quite a few have actually shown interest in research. Um, so is there maybe a way for us to facilitate that or assist them? And yeah, are there any courses that you would recommend our students get um, after they graduate? Hi, Adanel. Thank you for that question. I don't think you need a course per se. As long as you have your B BCMP degree, that is enough. As long as you have a BCMP, BCMP degree, it's enough because the one thing that will be a little bit of a challenge is coordinating. Getting into research is not an issue when you just have your degree, but coordinating, you will need things like staff management because you do manage uh, stuff, a lot of stuff when you're in um, clinical trials. Uh, so when you're in clinical trials, ideally you're going to start with coordinating. So, but then when you're in surveillance, you just need your, BC, your BCMP degree. If you want to bridge into coordinating, they do they do take you for a coordinating a study coordinator course. Like when you have to bridge also into monitoring, there is a course for monitoring. If you want to bridge into project management, there is a course for pro project management. So breaking through into uh, uh, research is not it's it's really not an issue at all as long as you have a medical background. Actually, even in clinical trials, they are people that are coordinating, but that the staff that is coordinating, but that they are not necessarily BCMP, uh, they're not clinical associates. There is nurses that are coordinating. There is um, a psychologist. So what they want is just 
somebody that has a medical background. If you have a medical background in clinical trials, you can coordinate, but you'll have to have a staff supervision. When you're in surveillance, they will take somebody that has a BCMP degree or even a nurse. Why? Because you'll have to do a, a little bit of invasive procedures as compared to coordinating. Coordinating, you're not necessarily hands-on with participants, unless if the clinic is full, that's when I go and assist. Thank you, that is perfect. Um, and in terms of electives, um, is there space for our students to, to do any electives in the research uh, space or any research facilities that you may know of? So now, I think that is something that we can propose because it's new. I think that is something that needs to be proposed. I can even propose that to uh, Prof Shabir or Prof Ziad um, so that they can get a little bit of exposure while they are still students. And, and then that can also direct them in what, whether they want to go into uh, clinical practice or they want to go into research. So it's, it's, it's new, but I don't think it's something that they will not agree to. So it's a proposal that we have to do um, to the different um, companies that are, to the different uh, research companies. Okay, thank you so much. That really does answer um, our questions. Um, I do have another question, and this is to Lunga and the other two speakers, so Masheko and Nomsa as well. Um, in two sentences, how can clinical associates be recognized in the clinical and research space? And do you think that the BCMP degree prepared you for your research journey? Um, when do you think research, research should be introduced at the training level? Okay. Um, I don't know if I'm answering answering you correctly. Um, this is my desire that after BCMP, we have, um, what do they call it? We have, um, it's not internship. What do they call it after internship? What do medics do after internship? Come serve. Come serve. I wish they could just give us one year of community service. If they give us one year of community service, then people can then be um, exposed to clinical work. And then after clinical work, you can go into, into research or you can stay in clinical work. So just one, that one year of community service can expose you to a lot of things. So I think that is the first thing community service. And then your your second question about research was? When do you think research should be introduced at the training level? Uh, research should be introduced on third year. In third year, they should teach us about research um, so that um, students can know that there is, this, there, there is this sector that they can branch into. And there is this sector they can study towards because when you're doing your master's in public health, you are going to be mostly in research. So if they can introduce um, research, uh, like maybe just like when you're doing, a, 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 um, what do you call it? Uh, as a student, a block, they can in introduce a block for, for research. That would really uh, assist our clinical associate students. So introduce a block and also after that uh, community service. And then in that way, it, it will really enlighten, enlighten the students. Because the only time I knew about research was when one of my colleagues actually was working for Vetsvida or RMPRU at that stage. Okay, so we have another um, question by Daniela. So to all the speakers, what do you think the challenges are regarding the recognition of the profession? Um, considering all the interactions you've had with the major stakeholders in Department of uh, Health and the District Hospital, um, like WITS. Thank you. Um, I think there is uh, a high recognition for clinical associates um, in, 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 the, in the country as a whole, um, in private and in public. There are clinical associates who have proven to us that there are opportunities by them um, spearheading and, and finding themselves in those places and then they are the champions uh, for us by being the first in those places to to then you know spread the message that clinical associates are here i just feel like um, the department is struggling to employ a lot of people because 
in, in general senses, they don't employ a lot of people. There are other faculties and other departments and other careers who are struggling to be employed. So we were not going to be exempt from that. Um, I just feel like we should just stay positive and not find ourselves limited into this district hospital placement and just uh, try to be positive that there are other opportunities out there. We just have to keep um, championing and, and scaling ourselves and, and, and eventually we will find our place in a very vast field of professionals. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Lunga, and thank you so much to the rest of our of our guests. Um, it was really lovely to hear the comments and the um, your careers that you've shared with our students. Um, guys, just to reiterate, our sessions or webinars are usually the first Monday of every month. So I hope to see you guys at the next one. Thank you. And see you guys soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mel.